Hi everyone, I just wanted to start this video by announcing the giveaway winner. So I'm just going to copy this through and see who wins out of this random comment picker. And the winner is... It's Emily Arts! I really hope you enjoy your orange line print. I'll get in touch with you as this video comes up. Now let's get into this video. Right. Going from me being all deep and <laughs> philosophical on that last one, this was just kind of almost trying to subvert that feeling. I was looking at Calvin and Hobbes <laughs> and I knew that I wanted to do something kind of like a comic booky style with the brush pen because that's what I love and I've seen lots of great artists who used it in that way and I do love me a fat pigeon so <laughs> that's quite true. Yeah, I really like the loose fluffiness that this piece has. I had a lot of fun just kind of like flicking with the brush pen on this one. The only thing that I would say is probably wish that I hadn't even bothered to add all of this in gouache, personally. I think I was so intrigued by giving this a darker level than up here and adding the stripe of like the uh, rock doves wing has, do you know what I mean? That, yeah, I can didn't consider that I could have left it. I think I'd gotten so addicted to ink washes <laughs> at this point in the month that, yeah, I just couldn't help myself, I had to do it again. So for Graceful, I think I'd had a little bit of the moment of Jasmine stop adding ink washes to everything <laughs> in that last video, and I knew I wanted to try and just stick with the fine liner. I think the trouble is, is this is kind of my only use of ink up until this Inktober. And I think I was so excited by busting out the actual inks that I kind of got away from just using fine liners. So this is probably the closest to the work that I normally practice of hundreds of straight lines and trying to make something look like a faux idea of realistic and detailed and I was trying to make something a bit creepier and unhinged because I was trying to subvert this idea of graceful by taking the deer and making it completely ungraceful but instead of doing it in kind of like the cutesy Bambi way I wanted to make it a bit darker and creepier. To be honest the thing I'm probably proudest of in this piece is the fact that I was able to give an idea of the animal in that position because obviously I couldn't get a reference. <laughs> This was like purely me trying to imagine it, but I feel like this is kind of how I would imagine a deer would look in this precarious situation. It gave me a great confidence that I was able to imagine an animal being distorted and being able to move its muscles, kind of in the way I was mentioning with the portrait on Divided. And yeah, it was just a nice little confidence booster. So, for Filthy, I couldn't stay away from ink washes too long. <laughs> Obviously not. I kind of go a lot more into depth in the video about this one than I really want to go into again here. One thing I would mention if you do use, I mean I use Winsor Newton inks just to clarify that if you're wondering. I don't know if you can see here, there's a really interesting effect if you look at places like this where this is like a mixture of blue, a bit of green, this is brown and gold. There's a little bit of gold in there as well and if you look at how it's like mauled across the page, now I'm not sure how this would act on a thicker piece of card but there's something really interesting about how ink in general basically can almost stay within. You can see the rough idea of where brushwork was but then how it fanned out only slightly with the water. So if you are planning on using ink washes in the future. Maybe take this as, you know, you can use this as a reference as I'm going to. I added a very faint bit of white to see how that would interact to the wet black ink as well and it's added this interesting like almost fog in the areas where I did it. I thought when I first put it on that it would add almost like a highlight and I was a little bit worried <laughs> that it would be really strong when I kind of only wanted the line work to be. But it's added this weird like mist to it which I really like and yeah it's it's funny how certain random experiments like that give you an idea for maybe in the future how you might approach another piece. So yeah that's just, if you're using it again that's my hints from my big mess <laughs> on filthy. <laughs> Okay, I know you can see it damaged the next page a fair bit. For Cloud, and this really is in my wheelhouse, this one. I, you know, I don't even have to ask with this one because this is just something I always used to draw all the time. I don't know why. <laughs> I think 
drawing patterns and drawing shapes, you know, constantly adding layers and seeing how those two like intertwine with each other and building them up. I don't know, it just really, it really interests me. It's a really weird one to try and explain because the way that you taught, I think, in school, or at least it's more of like a Western idea, I think, I don't think it's very big in places like Japan. When you look at anime or manga, the line weight doesn't vary with closeness. However, back when I studied art at school, the main point always seemed to be, no, it's closer, so, you know, the line should be thicker. A further away object should always be thinner. Like, that was always just taken as a given. And, oh, you've drawn it badly if you didn't. I kind of think the Japanese are onto something with the thinner line overall, because I think it forces them to investigate more ways of adding shade and depth to things, almost creating like a visual language as we do in the West of, no, thick means close, thin means far away. And I think it just means that they're far more experimental with pieces and they don't just try and make a very simple language with it, they play with it a lot more. And I, you know, I prefer looking at that, I guess. When I do with this, my my main feeling was kind of getting back to the thought process that I used to do all the time of well if I draw it this way how will it look compared to this or will it look darker than this or will it do this and you know if I do a certain line weight here where the line is thicker but I give it more space does it appear lighter or does it appear darker compared to say these where I had like a closer line but I had it thinner like that type of thought process is the main thing that kind of was going through my mind doing this yeah I I just don't enjoy it, I don't know. The thing I like about art is you can just sit there and you can just be learning about it just through drawing and doodling. You can learn loads of little like tricks and little ideas and when I draw clouds and I draw like, objects like this where I'm trying to build up shade and build up depth but with just line work, yeah, that's, that's kind of the thought process I go through. And I'd recommend it to anyone who is trying to think about shading and line work in a slightly different way and just seeing how the effect appears to them and what they like and then just trying to build it up in drawings again. So indeed, I had a really clear idea of what I wanted to do and it was just to keep this area of white light here as the focal white point of the image and then to just build up and up and up all of this ink and try and do that and I also kind of played about with this texture medium which is for watercolors originally and I kind of just dabbed it on top of the ink while it was still wet and I'm not sure how well that you can see the effect but if you look at all of these like weird scratches and the modeling of the ink around here. This is all the texture medium and how it affected the piece. I was really chuffed with this because I wanted this murky detail, but I didn't want to add loads of like extra brushwork detail like I did back in Underwater ages ago because I just wanted to try something different and I didn't feel like in the dark there should be too many obvious objects because that almost denotes like a much brighter light. I think you'll notice as well, I added pen work on top of this. This is me learning my lessons from teaming. I knew I wanted to add that extra detail and I am happy I did because I didn't want to add it in like a soft way. I wanted it to be really scratchy and have that kind of same like texture of the anglerfish. And yeah, it was just, I think this went really well. And you know, the masking fluid didn't completely rip off the page. A little bit because I then painted white ink on top of it to protect it. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a nice piece and I was quite happy with this one. Now, Furious. The Furious. It ain't my favourite, I'm not gonna lie. I think it was again wanting to break up the constant ink wash drawings and trying to again focus on shading. I had a lot of fun doing it, I'd agree with that. I really like this kind of shading here, the kind of like line dot, line dot. I think that was probably the right attitude to have. I think if I'd taken everything as seriously as I did that first week, I'd, I don't think I would have completed Inktober. So yeah, this is a bit of fun. Is it my favourite piece? Nah. Is it an alright piece? And I like the composition? Yeah, it definitely is. So yeah, it was an okay one. But following that, here's Trail, and Trail has to be one of my favourites that I did this month. And from the response it got as well, I think it's quite a few people's favourites. You can dispute that with me in the comments. I thought that when I initially drew this, that I was going to do it almost in a summer theme. This was going to be a completely full forest full of leaves, there would be no sky showing. Rough idea of the shape, I wanted these specific lines, you see in the perspective, I wanted these specific angles. 
that I'm putting out. But other than that, no, these were all just basically going to be trees and I was going to have hanging branches. However, as ink got to paper, I don't know whether it's the weather <laughs> or I was freezing, I don't know. But I began to have this just feeling of I wanted it to be more dark, almost like a burned down forest, almost like a really darkened image. And the kind of white of the sky beginning to reflect down through the cracks in the tree lines. I just wanted that as more of a shape. And then I even, after painting it, I took the thicker marker pen. I just kind of scribbled on. I just wanted to get this kind of really expressive idea of this is where darkness is. This is where the sharp angle is. This is the texture. I'm going to just like get it across. I want this to be a lot rougher. I want more feeling. In it. I think maybe because the Furious is almost like a very sterile drawing, I want this to be very emotive. And to me, this is quite an emotive image, I guess. Because even the thing that I was more imagining is the forest in the distance, or like a, a darkened idea of the landscape. There's some object there, but I don't know what it is. Almost also has this kind of misty look because it's like dried up this way. It's kind of giving me this weird creepy mist as well, so yeah. I just, I like the colours in this piece especially. I don't know if you can fully tell, but the way the, the ink dries, this kind of mould look that ink washes get, I absolutely adore it. If there's anything I really feel like I learn and I'm definitely going to bring in when I carry on working with ink is this. I love that kind of mottled colour. I like the fact that you can see so many different shades and yet you can't see it originally when you first paint it, you only see it afterwards and that's just... I love, I love when a medium does that, when it kind of acts a bit on its own accord and yeah I'll just... I'll stop, I'll stop going on about it but it's really nice. <laughs> okay and juicy. And I talk a lot more about how juicy was in the video again. But yeah, there was a few ideas I specifically wanted and I don't know how many people picked up on. His ear is a little tiny orange leaf. His teeth are supposed to be little orange seeds. <laughs> and I just, I almost wanted like a pop art kind of comic-y, book -y style with this. A lot of the shapes that I used were me kind of trying to do a very single, one curved line, second curved line. I didn't want to break this down into lots more circular shapes only because of the orange. I wanted the orange to be the only circular object and everything else to be broken up into smaller lines and block squared shape. And the reason for that is because I think the sharper straight lines in a way or very broad curved lines would bring that more to the surface. It would look, appear almost more like a flattened object compared to the rest, which is kind of like a pr pr like, you know, it's, it's all kind of rotating in space, I guess. It's really hard to explain what I'm trying to say there. <laughs> and I'm really not sure if I got it across, but it's more about breaking up images. No, I really liked it. I liked adding the white pen as well and adding this kind of like pointillism dots. I thought that was a lot of fun. And yeah, this is one of my favourite pieces. I think it just looks really cool. And yeah, I could imagine him as a character, so I thought he was cool. Uh, for 24 Blind, I was self-aware enough to realise that I hadn't done people, like I said I would originally. I was aware enough that I hadn't tried figures, which I can't stand. <laughs> but I keep trying to do anyway. And faces. I My big problem, I guess, with figures is how do I get that head to look like it's placed on that body? My heads are either too small or they're too big. I think this is a, another great example of me doing that a bit, but I ain't happy with this. And there's a few reasons why, and I'll just explain them to you because you might as well hear it, because if you also struggle with figure drawing, being able to identify where these things go wrong mean you're not going to make them again in the future, hopefully. Or well, at least that's that's how I look at analysing pieces of work like this. The things that went wrong in this, here's your collarbone going across here, okay. So I sketched out the line, there's your neck. This is something I've only recently kind of started to proportion correctly to heads. <laughs> I'm hoping that if I can get the head right, the neck right, maybe I'll just continue working down the body, maybe I'll start getting these scales correctly. <laughs> but anyway, get to the neck and then I know that I want this kind of straight line of the collarbone. So where the hell is this line going? Where's your arm going, love? Where is it going? I don't know, it should be back here. <laughs> so that's wrong. That chest piece should be more pushed forward, I think. I tried to, if you know, I tried to get a rib cage, and when you compare a male and female figure, the stomach and the abdomen, I think, is the biggest difference between the two when you try and do it. And I kind of think I foreshortened that a little bit too much. 
the hip should really protrude here and I think the trouble with this part right is here's a hip bone okay then there's the ball joint there isn't there and then we pull it back here I feel like probably her knee should be here and then the knee should probably end about this point because this length of the leg is longer than this length not how I drew it so that should probably be to about there if I'm into proportion probably about there actually then taking that knee joint I think if I wanted to save myself a bit of pain as well I probably could have moved this foot off the page <laughs> <laughs> and just copped out but I tried to get her in there and I really didn't like how the shoe looked as you can tell and yeah it's just there but I think that maybe the way that I need to look at this looking back on it is I think I need to maybe use a pencil or use an object to try and imagine the body more in space because the trouble with the pen is that it immediately forces your hand a bit and you've already done it but the difference is I'm not great at drawing horses but I think the horse turned out better because I knew roughly eye size to length of face to ear. I knew how I was going to structure it on that body. But because humans are so many like little sausages <laughs> connected by bits of string in my head, the scale and the proportions are a lot harder and I think the perspective applied on that as well is ten times harder. And I'm lazy. I really need to grow up a bit and start drawing structure and guidelines. I just need to do it. I never like guidelines because I'm lazy. <laughs> and I just I just can't be bothered. I'm just a lazy person guys, I'm really sorry. And it's why I don't improve as fast as I should. I, I, it's like I want to skip a step. It's like I don't want to read the instructions. And I think this piece kind of shows that a lot. It's a funny one because people seem to quite like this piece and I think they're just more forgiving on it because they know how much of a pain it would be to draw a person on the back of a horse and how annoying it is to draw those two things so they've given me a little bit of leeway <laughs> and they're just too kind but yeah I don't know this one's a bit of a pain I guess I'm not as big a fan <laughs> okay and now it's ship ship is like one of my favorites of the month and i really didn't expect it to be because when i read that word i thought oh my god i can't draw ships <laughs> what am i gonna do but they no, it actually turned out all right because i just went a little bit crazy with it i just had a lot of fun and i just because i set myself a story and how i wanted it to look was so much clearer in my mind especially in terms of the color palette i don't know it just all came together so even though i probably worked longer on it I just was so infused with it that yeah I just I just really enjoyed myself <laughs> so yeah things that I probably pick out specifically in this which maybe you didn't notice fully I'll show you this little guy he's kind of clear with it I started doing like a little skull and crossbones but with walrus faces <laughs> I really like how that looks I started doing a little seal as the front of that and there's some little guys like sitting about in there He's a fish salesman, he's selling the fish out there. These are all my little merchanty ladies. And uh, he's very shifty, but I really like him. And <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And there's my little seal pirates as well. I don't know, I just really like this idea. I really want to do a large piece of this. So hopefully you guys like it too. I also like pink and orange against dark blue. I just think those colors were really nice. So. Oh, um, oh, I know. One, one quick thing as well. I knew in this case that I only wanted to block out colours of light in pink and darker shadowy areas of the form in blue and just leave it. Like I, I didn't want to go really in detail. And some of the reason for that obviously was time, but I think there's a natural thing to do is when you colour in a piece of work to do like a block underlay of colour and then to add a lighter version of that same shade of colour as the highlight and then just a darker version of that same shade of colour. I mean this specifically in portraits, I think that's very true. What I love is when, and you see this more like I think in traditional painting, I mean I know digital artists you do as well so I'm not gonna be funny, but they instead of doing the highlight as a lighter version, what they'll do is they'll go, no I'm not gonna think of it in highlight and shadow, I'm going to take my palette colour and I'm going to subvert it red, so bring red into the colour for a warmer effect and I'm going to add a blue to the colour, like the original colour, and that will be my shadow. Instead of sticking with one, like say a peach pink 
for a skin colour. They add a blue, so the, the peach becomes more of like a, a green or a mauve kind of bluey colour. And then they contrast it to a pinker or an orange, and that will be the highlight. So instead of thinking, oh, I'm just going to add white, or I'm just going to add a darker brown or grey to the colour as my highlight and shadow, they add those to it. And I especially love it as well when they take a secondary light source that has its own vibrant colour, like, I mean, I, I kind of tried to do it a little bit here in these like string lights of like a, a sharp pink in this case. And then they try and reflect that colour again onto it as a secondary light source. And I just think that is gorgeous. I love seeing that kind of play with colour. And I think that that was on my mind a lot with this piece. And if I did do it a lot larger, I think the idea of reflected light of the sunset and of the string lights is the thing that I would probably focus on most just because I think it's just a gorgeous way of using colour. So yeah, I just wanted to go a little into depth about that. Okay, now it's squeak. <laughs> I didn't want to draw more mice, especially after teaming. <laughs> uh, I knew I wanted to do a finger again because I wasn't really happy with blind, as I think you might have guessed from my critique of it. And I actually was happy with it. Um, this is probably the closest I've ever got to being happy with a piece of artwork. Uh, just a quick note on the side, Koratasan, I think is how you pronounce it. She's got an amazing art channel herself. If you want to follow her, again, I'll link them in the description. She drew this amazing snail <laughs> during Inktober, and I do love snails, and I hadn't found an excuse to draw one, and I couldn't really see one in the last few prompts that I could get away with, so I did hide a little snail brooch in here for her, because I said I would try and nick one in. I don't think she noticed it, and I don't know if she'll watch this video, but I, I, it was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, this I just really like it. You know, it's not only like my favourite colour, I love how this mix kind of adds this layer, like I mentioned in the other one. I love this about ink, this kind of mottled effect, and how it can have lights and darks even within just a, a flat looking ink originally. I just love that effect, I think it looks really cool. And yeah, I just like her character. I like the fact that I didn't mess up the body, you know. There's the collarbone, there's the chest, there's the face. And it's, you know the reason why? It's because I actually drew out the structure this time. I didn't cop out. I drew how I thought all of the bones would get there. I, I drew her as a skeleton, basically. And a bunch of sausages, and she just worked a hell of a lot better. It's just a lesson in taking a bit more time to work something out. I do really link this one to Lani Justin, who's another YouTuber who makes very funny artwork. I mean, the way he caught up on Inktober was very funny, especially. And he left a comment on this one, making a joke that this one could easily be used for today's prompt and tomorrow's, which was fall. <laughs> I just I thought it was a funny idea that I could post this twice and get away with it. <laughs> But uh, try, I actually did try and make some up, <laughs> as tempting as it was. And this one, I kind of focused on vertical lines and horizontal lines and trying to like clash the two against each other to contrast the sky and the landscape. I really like this piece, and I think it's because it kind of culminated a lot of the things that I'd practiced over the month. Just having the patience to layer up multiple layers of ink and just giving things time that they need. I was so impatient at the beginning of the month and I really liked how this one turned out and the kind of bristles of the ink and how I was able to... I mean, at this point I'd realised that if I pushed the ink with the brush that it would stay within a certain level but then I could still soften it a little bit with some water but it would stay within like a block shape. So I was able to use that quite a lot in this piece. It was a moment where I could try out a lot of the techniques that I had made, as you see around here, with the stipple effect, and just apply them to a piece of art. And I think it's quite a, I think it's quite a powerful piece compared to some of the others. I think it's a very strong scene. So yeah, I was just, I was just really happy with it. And now for fall, I really like this piece, and it isn't just for the look of it. I like a lot of the techniques and styles that I learned by mimicking Alphonse Mucha's style. Because this like way of depicting the background, of making all of these like different orchard trees, and I think the effect really works well of just having this simple outline 
and then applying the colour within that line space. And I really love the hair and how he depicts them. This it's almost like it's almost like a string, a very like stringy look. But I love that kind of the shaping of it. I guess I, I really like that kind of look of the strands. And I think I'll definitely look to bringing this kind of hair into future pieces and this way of depicting a background. I just, I don't know, there's just a lot of things in the style that I really liked that I'm definitely going to try and bring in to future pieces. And again, by mixing in brown ink again, like I did in the other pieces, and letting it kind of like stipple again, I really like this kind of scaly look it gave to the snake. I was just really pleased with it. I think, I wish this hadn't been stippled. <laughs> I wanted this to remain bold, but the snake it worked on really well. I'm quite happy with this piece. And there's a lot of little effects that I thought were really cool. Okay, for United. This has got to be one of the most fun ones to make. I really enjoyed this. It was kind of inspired by Run earlier in the month and doing kind of like an interactive art again. I really enjoyed it and tipping it over, uh, it was a real nightmare. I was worried that all of this would start spilling out and moving about, but I had, you know, as I mentioned, the ink did seem to stay in place when I worked with it. So I was quite happy with it in the end, how it worked. I think I got a little bit lucky, but yeah, I thought it went well. And um, I'm not sure if you can see, just like a little bonus for people is, I actually was planning on drawing like flowers and leaves in this space and you might be able to see it in the pencil line work inside but after painting it and letting it dry I kind of preferred this loose outline that you can just faintly see it's like an idea of them and I thought it worked better and I didn't really want to add that extra detail because I think it detracted from this main movement that I really wanted to show and I mean some of this like I think the reason the glass looks better in this piece as well is I added some white right at the end and dab that on and let it kind of fan out in the thing and that's just really luckily given this like lovely uh, glare and highlight to the glass so a lot a lot of this I think is luck <laughs> as well as you know just quite a fun idea but I was really happy with that piece overall. For found, I was going for a found object this didn't really show in the video as well as it's showing hopefully now. In the video I scribbled a lot here and then I covered it in black ink and I thought well that probably looks like I was just trying to hide <laughs> what I'd done or like I'd changed my mind. Which I can understand but my main hope was, I'm not sure if you can fully make it out with this effect. I'll try and move it slightly. But I added like a thinner, it was a thin black ink, it always looks really thick black ink when it's added as a wash but I tried to add it just to get this you see this like mottling kind of effect over the top and how it can be lighter in this space here where I didn't add it and you know, these lines underneath. I wanted to try and give it kind of a, a dirtier look and add a bit of texture to it. I didn't want a flat wash because so much of this had an extra texture and detailed lines to it. I didn't want this to be fixed black because I feel like Uriah would only be drawn to it and I think those initial shots Uriah is drawn to it and I think that in person now when it's fully fully dry I think it, it works a lot better that piece so yeah that was the thought behind that and last but not least is Mask and with Mask again I liked the concept of this probably a little bit more than my execution and that's more because I I think I gave up the detail of the faces and the masks a little bit for the colour and the effect. I wanted it to appear as if you like at a masquerade ball. I'm looking directly at the piece and I think some of them are quite hard to see, but I did like the concept and I really like the colour. It's one of those pieces that, in the nicest way, looks better if you squint your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mind when a piece of art ends up like that because it's not a terrible way of ending a sketchbook with something a little bit more, I don't know, like a very expressive piece so that it kind of gives you more of a feeling than an object so I didn't really mind that that's how it ended up being. 
Now, I did want to record a whole part talking about all the great artists that I've been lucky enough to meet this month. And I did record it. However, it was over 20 minutes long and I thought I can't put anybody through this. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank all of you guys. You know who you are because I talk to you all the time <laughs> for your support and just making your own amazing Inktobers that I've really enjoyed following too and just carrying on work afterwards you know I was worried that maybe people would fall off and not do as much work but I'm really glad that people are still producing lots of great artwork so if you if you'd like to see all those amazing people just check the comment section I'm sure you'll see them and yeah that's it for this year's Inktober you got through it if you got this far fair game on you that's, that's amazing <laughs> I'm really glad you did and I really hope you enjoyed hearing a bit more of a thorough analysis of these drawings I'm really looking forward to seeing what you all start creating next and further down the road and I really hope you enjoy the rest of the work that's going to carry on coming out on this channel. See you again soon.